Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and today we're going to work with some vellum and some glycine bags. And we're going to make some different uh, ephemera to go in our journals. So, I have got some old book pages here, and I've got some fall labels. You know that I'm in fall theme right now. And then I also printed off this. I will show the full kit tomorrow, but this these tickets came from my porch prints. I printed those off, so I'm going to use some of those. And then I'm just going to use some scraps from different areas. So we're going to make some of these. I know a lot of people ask me, what can I do with my vellum? I have no idea. I've got vellum and I don't know what to do with all of it. So we're going to do some projects with vellum this week. We're probably going to, I know we're going to do this one and then tomorrow I need to do the Roxy's Weekly Challenge and that is with vellum and then I have a couple more projects that I'll be showing you some things to do with vellum so we're gonna do those now I'm trying to see if this is cut kind of straight it looks a little crooked yeah it's cut straight all right now you can do this many many different ways if you have one of those envelope punch boards you can put it in there and do it I usually just do my own thing I just fold it and kind of go from there now this piece is, we'll let you know, this is a scrap piece that I had and you can use any size. This is nine inches by eight and a half inches. And I'm gonna make two envelopes out of this. So I'm just gonna fold up to about right there. I'm leaving, ooh, let's see. I'm leaving about an inch and a quarter at the top and that's gonna be my fold over, okay? So, and you need to make sure when you fold your vellum that you've got it folded where you want it because it does make a really dark crease in your vellum. Because see, if you, if you tried to unfold that and do it again, you're going to have that dark crease in it, which is not a big deal if you're going to be covering it with paper. But if you're not, you might not want that to show. Now, since this is, what did I say it is? eight and a half so we're going to cut it at four and a quarter cut it in half then we'll make two out of this okay so there are two like that and now I'm going to take my little scoreboard since I've got two kind of folded like I want I'm going to take my little scoreboard and my scoring tool and I'm going to score on each side at about a half an inch. Just need about a half an inch to fold over. And I'm just lightly scoring. I'm not pressing on this hard. And I'm going to turn mine around and do it on the other side. You could do it from over here if you wanted. But a lot of times it's easier for me just to turn it around. So I've got a little score line over here. And a little score line over here at half inch. Okay, I'm going to go ahead while I've got my little scoreboard out. And I'm just going to score my little flap at the top. And I'm going to score right there at 4 inches. You just need to leave a little bit of gap between here, the end of this, and that. And that's so that you can insert your pieces in there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is you need to cut this piece and this piece off. So that little... And let's see, let's see which way I can see it better. Like this, I think. Just cut right down that score line that you just did. And then I do a little bit of an angle right there. And then again, hmm, it's hard for me to see that way. I'm going to cut a little angle right there. And then right down the score line. And you can put it back in your trimmer if you'd rather make sure that you get it absolutely straight. I, I didn't get mine straight, but you know what? It's going to go underneath this other piece, so I'm not going to worry too much. Now, we want to cut this little piece at the top off where you scored it. So just cut your score line off. Again, just kind of angling it right below that score line right there. So let me get these pieces up, and I'll show you what I have. Okay, let's lay it on this one, and I think you can see what I have. 
so I have a long piece like that I have my little folds on the side there and then I have this is my top flap and the way this is going to do this is going to fold up and then these side pieces will fold over now if you if they don't fold over exactly straight like if you feel a little resistance in it when you start folding then all you need to do is just trim this piece back a little bit more but mine seems to fold okay so I'm not going to worry about that now if you want to put these on the inside you can do that and then it looks more like one of those store-bought vellum bags as you can see you don't have that on the outside so you can do that now I am going to do this in order to cut my little flap up here at the top but you can just trim it off on one side and then use that to trim the other side if you want but I think I'm going to do mine like this that way I get both sides about even okay there we go so there's our little top so I'm just going to go ahead and reinforce those if you press this down with your bone folder it is going nowhere like that and then these pieces will fold up so again I'm going to press that down nice and flat and then this will fold over just like that and there is your envelope of course we're going to decorate it but I just wanted to show you how that was made now if you want this piece to come a little bit lower so that you'll have more room to get things in there then you can cut this one down a little bit too I think I might on some of them but on this one I think I'm going to leave it but I would do it the same way I would fold it up like well I would probably fold it before I reinforced everything but I'd fold it up like that and then just cut a little angle off of it if you wanted to but I think I have plenty of room to put mine in there so I'm not going to worry about that all right let me look looks like I've got a little bit of crookedness going on here okay let's go ahead and make this other one up and then we will start decorating some things so I'm just going to lay it in my scoreboard like that you could put these score lines in it before you fold it but to me it's just as easy because you don't have to press on this hard at all as a matter of fact don't press on it hard because it will tear your vellum like that and then I'm just going to make that little line at the top there we go okay then before I fold anything I'm gonna go ahead and cut my little top piece here it's a little bit easier to cut it before I make any other folds on here now someone did ask me the last time I made pockets and I don't remember who it was but the last time I made pockets someone asked me is there a way that you can make it that the flaps are on the back side instead of on the front yes so we will do this one like that where the flaps will be on the back so for the flaps to be on the back you need to cut these two pieces off and not these so we're going to angle a little bit right there and then I'm going to go in and just slice right up through there best I can like that and then we'll do the same thing over here cut down I think it's when we made the oh I want to say it was when we made the policy envelopes I had someone ask wasn't there a way that you could make the you know folds go to the back so that they wouldn't show on the front so yes you can do that I usually just don't think too much about it but you can do it just this way you just have to cut off the opposites of your little flaps okay make sure that looks like it's folded pretty good so in order to do that what you would do is open these little flaps back up and then you're going to fold them around to the back side 
and let's see looks like I might need to trim off just a tiny bit more on one side or the other because I, when I try to fold this one over I get some resistance so I'm just going to go back down through here and trim again just a tiny bit just a hair and we'll just go ahead and do this side while we're at it all right now let's see so that folds over good okay they both fold over well now so that's good we'll go ahead and give it a burnish and now you have your little flaps on the back side and if this was something other than something you could see through you wouldn't be able to see those little flaps so then that will fold over just like that so that's how you reverse them and do them the opposite way all right we're going to go ahead and put a little barely arts glue on here and guess what we got barely arts in today and you know barely arts is my favorite for vellum because it doesn't make it pucker like and i'm just gonna fold mine up like this it doesn't make it pucker like uh, art glitter glue does so that's why i like my barely arts and it's clear it disappears so you don't have to worry about that I'll show you in just a minute let me get it rubbed down well you do need to rub it a little bit but see you can not see the glue in there and it's not puckered it's just as flat as it can be I don't know how many we got I, I will make sure that they're in the store by the time this video goes live but um, we I noticed we did get a box in we got all that we could get all right there we go so there is that one when that dries you'll not be able to see any of that glue now we're going to do a little bit of decorating and a little bit of fall decorating on these i got this collection and i've printed out i think i printed out every one of them this is from nancy's fancy's beads on etsy and i'll put her link below and this is isn't that cute those gnomes and then here are all kinds of fall pieces it's little acorns and pine limbs and all kinds of things like that so there's that one and look at this isn't that pretty very very pretty and then this one i think i'm gonna lay that one out because i am going to be using some of those pumpkins that one these are so cute that one this one love the brightness and then these you can cut out these little pieces so we'll probably cut some of those out and use those and then this one there's another gnome head and this coloring is really pretty too in the back isn't that pretty so that one is called let me check and make sure what if i know what that was called this one is called pumpkin patch so you can go over and pick this one up from nancy and like i said that link will be below so we will make sure that we get it down there for you all right i think i'm going to use some old book page and let's see how do i want to do this i'm going to tear this white off this is very very old a book page so i think i'll put that right there and then hmm, i just want to tear a piece of her tear it like this and you know one of the fall journals that i'm working on has the orange and the blue in it so that's going to go well with that and then cut this like this and I may have tore this the wrong way but if we did that's okay we can just put our book page on the other side okay I'm gonna fussy cut or fussy tear around these a little bit closer to get rid of some of that white I think we'll do that and then I feel like I need something right up in here 
and I have some of this beautiful washi tape that I, I'm thinking will look really good so we're going to put a strip of this down through here all right I'm gonna ink up my pieces here and I'm just gonna ink them in vintage photo and I'm just going in with my blending tool and I'm just going over that white that's on here just to tone that down a little bit okay let's start gluing and see what we get I think I want that up hmm I'm gonna have to tear me another piece I didn't tear that one exactly like I want it so let's just go in here and tear another one we will use that one somewhere else okay let's glue this down I have something in mind I truly do it's just taking me a minute to get there okay and then that piece like that okay I'm going to trim this little bit off here that I left hanging over and then we will re-ink that Okay, I'm going to go all around inking my envelope and then we're going to put something on the front right there in the middle. Well, close to the middle. We may not put it exactly in the middle. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm going to glue this down, but I went ahead and inked part of the back anyway, but I think I'm going to glue it down on three sides and have another little tuck behind it, but we just left it that way for now. Let's see. I like... There was one I saw just a minute ago. Pumpkins. I thought that was cute. And I saw something else that I wanted to put under it. Now what did I do with it? Okay, I'm going to try putting a little piece of this tea bag underneath it. This is just a tea bag that has been... I don't know. I, well, I don't know if it's brand new. Or somebody's seen it to me. I don't know if it's brand new or if somebody just washed it really well but it's nice and clean so I'm just cutting it and I'm probably going to ink it a little bit we want it to look like the tea is still in there don't we and then maybe too long I may have to trim it now I'm going to crinkle it up because this one is way too new looking for me. I want it I want it crinkled and wrinkled and just like I had just taken it out of my teacup. So there we go. Put a little bit of glue on there. Okay, now don't worry about that when it dries. It's going to be clear, so don't worry about the glue. Yeah, right below. Okay, I started to say, oh, I have to put that too high, but it's right below my flap, which is good. I like that. Okay, then I am going to use this little stem right here to just go up this side like that, just to add a little another layer to it. A little bit more decoration and another layer. And this came from one of you guys. Okay. So there is that one. Now you could go ahead and put something up here. You could embellish that with lace or trims. Uh, another label. You can always put another label on these. It doesn't have to be just one label. You could put another label on or a different kind of label if you wanted to. Um, I'm thinking that might be all that I do to this one. When I put this in my journal, if I decide that I want something else up here, I can always do it then. But that is the first one quick and easy and they look so cute in your journals so let's do this one now what do we want to do with this one okay I think on this one I'm going to use this piece of scrapbook paper and I'm going to put this little bird on this one and I'm just going to tear down through there and then we'll tear over here okay oh I like that I like that little birdie now, I need a doily, I think, to go in the middle. What do you think? Do you think a doily would work? Let's see if I have any in here that are small enough. 
These are some that I got from AliExpress, and I was going to put them in the store, but they ended up not being exactly what I thought they were. They're really thin paper, so I was a little bit afraid to put them in the store because they're not as not as robust as I thought they were. Hmm. I don't know what I think about that. I would rather have one that's colored to go on the back. So let's see what else we have. I have a few here, but I don't think these are going to... Oh, you know what? We've got this orange one that we colored with. I just colored that with ink. So that is just plain ink, brushing on ink. You can do that without having to wet anything. This is just a dry ink. And then put our little bird in the middle there. And I don't mind that the dually hangs off on both sides. That doesn't bother me. So we're going to ink this up. And I'm going to ink the edges of the dually with brown since I have all of that orange going on there. Okay, let's glue that down. Right. Then we'll put our little birdie down there. And I'm going to take my little brush and all of that white that's in there, I'm just going to kind of go over that so that I can knock that white back a little bit. Yep, I like that. I'm going to show you something else that I do. I don't know. You know, there's probably not very many people that do the things that I do. This is a little bit too pink for me. Now, I could take a marker and go over that. But I'm just going to take my little blending tool. And I'm going to fold my paper back a little bit. And I'm just going to use the ink that's on there. To kind of put a little bit of orange in there. So that it matches the background better. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing over here. You, in these smaller places, you could use a little Q-tip to do this, but you know me, I like the fast way. So now, our little birdie matches better. So we're going to put him down. Now I'm going to bring him down closer to the bottom since this piece folds over. I'm not going to put him right in the middle. Bring him down like that. And then I'm going to see if I have a little ticket that I could put on here, maybe. No, the ticket's a little bit too big, so we'll put another word on here. And I'm going to use autumn on this one. I love the fall words. You know, we have labels for just about everything else, but I'm looking for labels for fall. All kinds of fall. And on this, again, I'm going to knock that white back by just putting a little bit of ink on there, brushing some ink on. And then we shall put that down right there. I'm going to do a little trick that we used to do in our scrapbooking all the time. I'm going to let my label pop up just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Didn't glue it all the way down. Just going to let it pop up a little bit. Just gives it a different look. There we go. All right. Now, and even if it gets pressed down when the when the journal is closed, it's still going to look great. It'll have a few little wrinkles in there, and that will make it look even older. So that's not a problem. All right. So that is another, and I may run some lace or something up at the top of that one because it looks a little naked up there. So let me see what I have. All right. I have some different options. Or some lace. I know this is going to be way too big, but look how pretty this is. The butterflies. We're going to use that on something. It's got yellow butterflies in it. I was thinking about this. Just a piece of this rick rack across there. But I'm not crazy about that. This, let's see. Hmm, that has a little bit of It has a little blue in it, so I don't want to use that one. So let me let me look in my stash and see what I have. All right, you know what? I'm going to put this piece of burlap on there. You know, I told you that I don't feel like it's fall unless you use some burlap and something. So I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. 
And someone asked me why did I not have my Fabri-Tac and my Sugar Bell bottle. I just haven't put the new one in there yet, and I've almost used the new one up, so I'll probably just get another one to put in there. Sometimes I just get busy, and I just forget about things. You could also stitch around these, and that would look very, very cool to stitch around all of them. Now, what shall we do? I think I am going to put a little number or something up here. So let me... Somebody sent me a bunch of little numbers the other day. What did I do with them? Let's just pull out one of Tracy's right now. And I will find those other ones that... One of you guys sent me a whole little bag of little tiny numbers. And I need to get those out and use them up. Okay. These are Tina's. Sorry, they're not Tracy's. These little numbers are Tina's. Shabby Dabby Doodah. Um, what color do we want? I think a black one's probably going to be my best bet. Hmm, no, I don't like that. The brown might work. Let's just do it. We'll do the number one. And I think I'm going to trim it down a little bit more right to that little line there. And these, like I said, are Tina's Shabby Dabby Doodah on, its, on Etsy. On Etsy. Shabby Dabby Doodah. Shabby Dabby Doodah on Etsy. She makes these beautiful labels. So I use a lot of her labels and I use Tina's labels. They both got gorgeous labels and tons of them. Okay, let's put this one over here since we put that one on this side. Okay, now I did not ink around this, so I'm going to go ahead and at least ink up my little flap here so that you'll be able to see where the flap comes to. We'll go ahead and ink a little bit around this. There we go. So there's another. Now let's decorate up some glossing bags. Now, these have the little lip at the top that goes, uh, the, t the back is higher than the front. And I think I just want to tear that off. I think I want, I want the top of my pocket just torn, roughly torn. And we have all of these sizes of the glossing bags in the store, and I will link those below. There's various different sizes. There is various sizes of those. I think it's small, medium, and large, maybe. And I think these are the mediums. I do believe. Okay, I just went ahead and inked that first. Now, what shall we put on this one? All right, we're going to put an extra little pocket right here. Again, this this is from My Porch Prints, and I will link it below. I don't remember the name of it, but it's fall something or other. But I'll link it below. I'm going to cut this pocket out, and I'm going to use this pocket to go on top of the glossing bag. Now, you don't have to cut one out that's already pre-made like this. I just happen to like the coloring in this one. You can make a little pocket to go on top or you can not even put a pocket on top and just decorate it it doesn't matter but I just saw this one and I thought oh I love those colors and I'd like to use that okay I think it's the exact size yes it is it is the exact size so we don't have to trim anything off now this little piece looks a little wonky to me so I'm gonna try to straighten it up some, I believe. Try to straighten some of it up. It just looks, I cut it probably wonky. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, then we'll ink this one up, and I'm going to ink this up in our spiced marmalade because it, it does have some orange in there. Oh yeah, that's going to be cute. Now, if you want your, your pocket on your vellum bag 
to have that little opening in the front so that they can tell where the the um, pocket starts you could just cut one in there but I'm just gonna tear a piece down maybe and like that I want it a little bit crooked and I know you'll say well why did you tear that off if you wanted the back taller than the front it was already that way because I wanted the torn look I didn't want the real precise look that that other gave so, and I just tore it off a little bit so that you could tell which was the front and which was the back. Plus, you'll be able to see your pocket now, where your pocket starts. There we go. So, that's what we got. And then we're going to put this down on there. Make it another pocket on the front. Oh, that is cute. I like that. Righty, let's see. She has some tags that go in there, but I may end up making my own tag. I'm not going to make tags in this video because, you know, you guys can, you know how to make your own tags. So this video is mainly going to um, concentrate on using up your vellum bags and then your acetate to make pockets. We'll make tags in another video. Okay, this this just says leaves. There's an ink around that. Now I want something under it, but I think I'm just gonna put book page under it because if I put anything else that's thicker, it's gonna um, stick up and then it's gonna hinder my pocket. So let's just do this. Yes, and I'm using brown and orange ink. It doesn't matter. You can use different inks on the same project. Gives it a different look. Okay. Put that right there. Put that down there. And let's see. Oh, this has a little blue in it, so we could always put that across there. Well, it doesn't really show that much, though, does it? Hmm. Okay. Maybe we won't. What about this? Put a piece of that across the bottom. Yeah, I think that'll work. So there is another. And you've got a pocket here and a pocket here and then that can glue down on three sides and then you could have a pocket behind if you want that is another one that's cute I like that all right let's do another glassine bag okay let's experiment a little bit <laughs> I'm gonna experiment with you guys um, let's put some washi on this one and see what it looks like it might look okay if I can get it straight, but that's going to be the problem. Or not exactly straight, but if I can get it on here like I need it. Okay, that's the back. I want to put it at an angle. And I'm just going to run it past the bag, and I can always trim it off. So, what next? That one, that's bright. But that's still some fall colors. Let's see. Don't know what's on this one exactly. It may not look right. No, that one doesn't work. Let's see if I have another fall. Oh, I do right here. It's looking right over that one. Let's see. That goes this way. My little acorns would be upside down. Put it the other way. And let me see. I don't think I have another one. Well, this one. Nope. That's a little bit more springish. This one would be. Ooh. I pulled that too hard. Well, this one is so sticky it keeps tearing on me. But evidently, it tore enough that I, I've got enough there. So there's that. 
And I'm thinking that's probably probably the last fall one I have. Yeah, the rest of them are more summer. So we're just going to do this one again. No, we're going to do this one again. This is a beautiful washi. Very, very pretty. That right there. And then one more little piece right there. <laughs> okay, do we want to go? No, I don't think I want to go any higher. Lift these up. Some of these are going to be easier to lift than others because some of them are, are a lot more sticky. That one doesn't want to lift, so we'll just pick it up and put it on there. Okay, so let's trim this off and see what that looks like. Just don't cut the glass in bag, Edith. Now you could have folded these around if you wanted. Um, I haven't decided what I'm doing with this one yet, so I didn't fold it around, but you can. Just fold them around if you're going to glue this straight down to your project or your page. And yes, I could save these little pieces and use them, but I think I'm going to just throw them right here. I've got a lot of washi in the drawer that I need to use up. Look at that. I like that. That is cute. Oh, yeah. I like that a lot. Okay. Now, you know what we could do? We could go up through there. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's do that. I've got quite a bit of this rick rack, so let's just do it. I'm going to close this up before it decides it wants to clog on me. Little bitty bead right up the edge of that. Oh, how cute is that? Okay, no one else might think this is cute, but I do. And it will lay down once... I get everything on it and the glue dries, it will lay down. You know, it's trying to curl right now, but it'll lay down. I'm not worried about that. Cute. Let's see, do I need more? Oh, I at least need to cover that one. I may not put it on every one, but I at least need to go on both sides of this orange. Oh, I am loving this. I may make some pages like this. That just makes that pop, doesn't it? And now, I think, I want to put it on one more, maybe. Let's see. Maybe this one? This one? No, not that one. I want to skip that one. I want to put it on this one, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to let those dry before I trim the ends off. Just in case I pull on it or something. Now, we want to put something up here, and I'm thinking about one of these tickets. Hmm, if I put it that way, I don't know if that would look okay or not. Nope, not crazy about that. Not that one. That one looks a little bit better, but I think I would still need to put something underneath. And I'm just going to clip these corners off. All right, I think I am going to put down a piece of this book page right there. And then this ticket, and then this little word, Harvest. Oops, stuck to me like that. Cuteness, I like that. And I'm going to leave the back on this one up. Just, I'm not going to tear it off or anything. All right, let's cut these little pieces off and see what everything looks like. Oh, I love that. That is going to look so cute 
in our journal. And you know, you could you could still even put something right there, like a little label or something. That is so cute. But that's all I'm going to do to it. Right now, we could always do something later. I am going to ink this little part just so you can tell where that pocket starts there. There we go. So there is another. So let's make more vellum, little vellum pockets. I do have another piece of vellum somewhere, don't I? Let's do some more vellum. Let me move some of this back and get it out of my way. What we're going to do now is make some belly bands with our vellum. Now, this is just standard vellum. It's not, it's the kind that we sell in the store. I don't know what kind you might have, but any kind should work. This is a little bit uh, stiffer maybe than some, but like I said, it is the kind that we sell in the store. All I did was I folded this over, and you can make them any width that you want, but I just folded mine at one and a quarter because I think that's kind of wide enough. Now, I want to put something in here so that it will be really pretty when it shows through. So let me see what I might have that would look pretty in there. I think any of any of this would look pretty in there, but I want something that has a solid pattern down through there. This has got some white on it, so... Oh, I think I'm going to do that. I just laid those in there, and they almost are a perfect fit, but they're still just a little bit that you can pull on and pull those out, and I think I'll let that be just a little tuck pocket for these. Now, this is eight and a half inches long, this vellum is. These tickets, of course, are a little bit longer. So, let me see what I want, might want to do. I really don't want to cut one in half. So, if I slide it down to there. Okay, I think I'll cut this bottom one off. I can always print this again. It's a good part about digitals. If you use things like this up, you can always print it again. And then I'm going to take my little punch and I'm just going to punch out these corners. Ooh, I think this is going to look pretty. It's just something different. You know me, I'm always looking for something different. Okay, and then these, I want to punch those out. Okay, let's see if we can do those with this. I don't think so. I think that's going to be, well, maybe so. So I really don't want to cut them apart, so I am just going to cut those little pieces. I think I'll do better by cutting them because my punching skills on little pieces like this might not be too great. Oh, these would be so good. I'm sitting here and my mind's running a thousand miles an hour. These would be so cool to use your scraps in. Just make a little collage uh, piece that is about the length of this and put it in there, that would be cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, now I am gonna ink this up and I'm just gonna ink it in brown. And this is vintage photo. Uh, I think that will look better than the orange in there. Now we're just gonna open that up a little bit and stick that in there. Now this vellum is tight enough when I take my bone folder and I press this little fold down, it's tight enough that those tickets won't fall out. So there's no need to glue anything or anything like that. Just leave it as is. Look at that. That's cute now. Cuteness overload. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that I get them about centered. Now, I, I do think that I will either stitch right here or run a little bit of glue right at the end so that they don't slide up and down what should I do? Let's just put a little glue in there for now. We can always go back and stitch if we need to later. And this is just right at the top and right at the bottom of the tickets, just to make sure that that ticket stays where it's supposed to and doesn't slide up and down. Now, if you wanted to glue your pieces in, you could. I'm just gonna kinda use it as a little tuck pocket that way. Right, then I'm going to go around my vellum. So there is a little belly band. Let me grab a journal. I got one here. I got one here. 
this is the journal I've been pulling out and doing all of this stuff with. Whoops, I don't want to don't want to show everybody my writing. Okay, we'll just put it on there. Let's just pretend. Pretend. Now that these are shorter pages than the one I would put this in, but even if I have to trim it off, I I've centered these tickets up so I can trim it off. But look at that. That'd be cute. Cuteness, cuteness. I like that. And then you can always put a little something else on the top if you wanted to. Uh, let's see. I keep going back to this Rick Rack for some reason. You could always put a little piece of Rick Rack on the side like that. Or we could, let's grab a piece of trim then put down through there. Oh, this trim will probably be pretty there. And all of this trim one of you guys sent me, or a bunch of you guys sent me, I have got trim from a lot of you. Oh yeah, and I'm going to let it hang off a little bit on that side. And let's see. I think I will put this down with my Barely Arts. And I told you guys, we do have Barely Arts that just came in. I have just put it in the shop. I don't know when we'll be able to get more. I begged this out of them. <laughs> and so he took some out of his own inventory that at their store where they sell and sent me uh, about 23 bottles of each. Now, we still can't get the original. No, we still can't get the refill or the bundle. They, they can't get bottles for that. But we do have the original and the mini. So if you want some, you can get it while it, it, it lasts because I don't know how long it'll be before we get more. Just wanted to let you guys know because I've had lots of people ask me, please let me know when you get more. So I wanted to let you know. Oh, I like that. Coolness. Okay. Yeah, that's glued right to the edge. So that will stay on there like that. And then, let's see, what else? I think we might have to put a little piece of bling on there. Black bling. Just a little bit right at the top, maybe, or in the middle. Maybe. Maybe right here. And the Barely Art glue would hold this, um, this bling, but you, ha you would have to sit there and hold it for just a second. And so I just use my Fabri-Tac because it puts it down there pretty quick. Okay, so that's there. And then I think I might want to put a little label on there too. What about falling? <laughs> falling. Uh, let's see what else. We have gather. I like that. Let's just do that one. I'm going to cut the ends of it off. And then I think I'll put it right there at the top. So cute. And that's just wide enough for my vellum. Okay, now I'm going to make sure. I'm pretty sure this is eight and a half. And that's the height of my pages. But I just wanted to make sure. Yes, it's eight and a half. So that's the size or the height of my pages. So that's going to work great right there. Now that is cute. I like that. Okay, I'm just going ahead and rounding off these little pointy corners here. Just cut them a little bit at an angle. Okay, so that is our cute little belly band. I love that. And then these will come out. All right. So those will just slide out and then you can slide them back in. Very, very cute. Okay. That is that one. Um, let's see. 
do there's one more thing I want to do to this I know you're saying good grief how much more you want to do nope there is one more thing we've got those that teal pumpkin so I'm thinking about putting and since we know this is the height that we need I'm gonna put a couple of pieces of bling let's see nope that's a different color not that color this color maybe see if that will work yeah that one will work a couple of pieces of bling right at the top and right at the bottom there we go so that is our little belly band hold it up closer where you can see everything cuteness love that Okay, let's make another belly band and let's make this one a little bit wider and we will put something in it. I'm just going to fold it right there. I don't have a clue how wide this is. I'm just folding it. Right there. Okay, then we'll trim this off. Whoops, we won't trim it with that trimmer. We'll trim it with our other trimmer. Now, regular paper would not work so well doing this because you have to have that vellum texture that you that folds down and stays folded real well. See how well that stays folded? Paper wouldn't do that. It has to have a tight crease right here. But I don't think your paper, I don't think you'd find any paper that would do that. So, let's go ahead and round our corners while we're working on this. And since this is two layers of the vellum, it will round just fine. And this is eight and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, well, let's see. It's actually eight and three quarters, so we need to cut it down to eight and a half. So I'm gonna cut quarter of an inch off of it. Whoops, I let that slide. Now we will round that corner. Okay. This is one of Hello Susan's papers and this is Autumn Bliss. And Susan, I'm going to have to have more of this so I guess I'll just go and purchase it because I'm using some of this on this one. So I am going to cut that off right there if I can find my pencil. Am I the only one that buries everything when I'm crafting? I bury everything. Okay. So we'll trim that off right there. Isn't that pretty? I think that's going to look really pretty in there. Oh, I cut my little squirrel in two. Oh no. Oh well. I will. I'm sorry, little squirrel. I will print, print you again and bring you back to life. Okay. That's going to go right there. There we go. I'm going to trim just a tiny bit off at the bottom. It's a little bit longer. And then we are going to round these corners on the paper. Cute. Now that is pretty in there. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Okay, let's go ahead and ink. And I'm just going to leave my page in there, I think, and ink. That way I can ink the vellum and the page edge at the same time. Now this sticks out just a tiny bit too, so that you could pull that out if you wanted to. And if you don't think you're going to want to pull them out, then just go ahead and glue your little pocket together. You can just glue this piece in there. I'm just going to leave mine as is, and we'll see. I may end up gluing it when I put it in my journal, but who knows? just think that's adorable. Okay, you know what? I have changed my mind. I am going to trim this down and glue it in there because my vellum wants to come up a little bit. And I think when it's nice and tight is when it's going to show better. 
so I'm going to go ahead and trim the edge of this off because I'm not going to be taking that piece out like I would the tickets. I will be taking the tickets out and using those and putting something else in there maybe, but I won't be taking this piece out. It kind of jagged my paper up right there a little bit. Trim that. Okay. Yeah, now we'll ink that edge again since we trimmed all that off. Oh, me stitching around this is going to look so pretty. Okay, I may stitch this in. Let me think. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of drops of glue on the back, and then I think I'm going to stitch around it. I'm just going to put a drop here and there just to hold it in place. Because once I stitch it, it's going to stay anyway. I'll show you how that glue works. Look at this. Now, I put glue on the back of that, but you cannot see it. And it doesn't pucker my vellum. It doesn't do anything. Wonderful stuff. Okay. I'm going to flip around to my sewing machine, and I'm going to stitch right around the edges of this. I'm trying to think if I want that edge. I don't want that edge so I'm going to stitch around the edges of this and then we'll come back and I'll put a few labels maybe or something on the top. Now look at that. Isn't that cute? Now if you don't sew, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can take a black or brown marker or pen and just go around this with the little dots and make it look like it's stitched. You do not have to stitch it together. Ooh, but I like that really really like it all right now I think this calls for a butterfly and I may have one already cut out I'm not sure let's see what color do we want I think I want a blue or a green that yellow one would even look cute wouldn't it let's see oh I've got some blue ones right here Let's try that one. I think I like that one better. It stands out more. Um, because this, the fall is going to have some blue in it. No, I think it's that one. I think that one won. Because there is some blue in this collection, as you can see there. Oh, we could even cut that one out and put it on there. That would definitely work. But I'm trying to keep from having to cut one out. So I think this one's going to be it. And then, let's see, do I want some of this vintage trim on the edge? Do I or do I not? Oh, I do. I do. This is a very old trim that one of you sent me. I know it's got to be old because I have not seen this trim around in ages. And it, it has that texture, you know, that you can feel that, that it's been there for a while and it's made out of completely different materials than we use today. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our butterfly down. And if we put him down here, you're still going to be able to see everything. Then we'll put our trim down and I'm going to turn it out like that. Let's see. This side is the upside. And I could have stitched this on, but, you know, I didn't even think about it when I was stitching. Now, I am going to have to put a little bit of glue under this wing here because I'm going to put a little bit of trim right on top of it, and I don't want it coming up. You know what? I think I want my butterfly wing on top of that so I'm just going to pull that out and I'll put a little bit more glue under there to hold that down didn't look right with the butterfly wing being underneath so we'll do that okay and then uh, just a little label is all I want just a little label somewhere I got, uh, let's see, we don't want one that says summer, we want, 
we could put journal on here that would work I'm just gonna trim the ends off I don't want to cover up anything so I think I'll put it right there let's see if I need a piece of book page behind it yep I think so oh now you know what I'm gonna be doing for the next five days <laughs> is I'm gonna be making these and putting all my scrap paper in there oh my goodness if I just had more time I could show you lots of different things Oh, I love that. Okay, there is another, and of course we've got to put a piece of bling right there, and the butterfly. And I know this looks a little bright right now because of these colors behind, but it does have blue up here, and then our paper also has that blue in it. So it will all come together when we put all of our pages in. There is our little butterfly. Isn't that cute? I love that belly band. Now I'm going to be making a ton of these to use in all of my journals. Okay. All right. I think that is it. Let me pull everything out that we just made. Let me close all this up. This is a glossine bag. Glossine bag. Vellum pocket. Uh, vellum pocket that we made. And then two vellum belly bands. Cuteness. I like it like 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 it i love it no i don't like it i love it all right i think i you know i think i'll go ahead later and probably put something on that like i did here i think it just calls for it but that is it that's it for the video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and if you make some of these make sure that you go over to our facebook page and share them pictures of them over there because we want to see what you create and we want you to make these so make sure that you share them with us we would love to see your creations all right we will talk to you guys later thanks so much for watching bye bye